Right, so this is an Agilent um, 7820A GC system. This is a GC with an FID detector. This one is actually controlled via a keypad that is electronic. Control temperature, flow, um, pressure of our gases, just to give you an idea of the controls we have. Um, this particular instrument, our mobile phase, is, is hydrogen. So we have a hydrogen generator. And so this hydrogen generator actually produces the hydrogen that um, is used as a mobile phase for our instrument because this is a FID, has an FID detector, a flame ionization detector, so it makes a hydrogen flame. Um, and so the hydrogen, again, um, is used for the fuel, for a detector, as well as our mobile phase. Um, and then over here we have nitrogen, um, which is used as a makeup gas just for additional, um, additional pressure. And then this over here is um, some high purity air that is our oxidant for our flame. So um, our system, uh, we're getting our mobile phase, hydrogen. So the hydrogen comes in, move this up here. So you can actually see that our auto sampler here is merely covering an inlet. So this is an Agilent um, 7820A GC system. Um, this is a GC with an FID detector. So it, this one is actually controlled via a keypad that is electronic. So, um, so again, we control temperature, flow, um, pressure of our gases and all that. So just to give you an idea of the controls we have. Um, this particular instrument, our mobile phase, is, a, uh, is hydrogen. So we have a so we have a hydrogen generator. And so this hydrogen generator actually produces the hydrogen that um, is used as a mobile phase for our instrument. Helium is becoming more and more expensive. Um, so our hydrogen generator here not only is our mobile phase, but it is also the fuel because this is a FID, has an FID detector, a flame ionization detector, which is fueled by hydrogen, so it makes a hydrogen flame. Um, and so the hydrogen, again, um, is used for the fuel, for a detector, as well as our mobile phase. Um, and then over here, we have some makeup gases. We have nitrogen, um, which is used as a makeup gas, just for additional, um, additional pressure. And then this over here is um, air, um, some high purity air that is our oxidant for our flame. So um, our system, uh, we're getting our mobile phase, hydrogen. So the hydrogen comes in. Our auto sampler here is actually covering an inlet. So this is the heated inlet. So that's where our, um, in, that's where our sample gets injected. It's typically heated uh, well above the boiling point of any of the sample components so that they're instantly vaporized as they get injected onto the column. Uh, so they enter there, they get vaporized, they're mixed with the carrier and then the carrier gas uh, takes them down to the column. Right, ours is fitted with an auto sampler, auto injector. So, um, so we have our needle for our auto injector right there. So we can, we can inject uh, typically microliter amounts at a time. Um, our hydrogen generator hasn't been run for a while, so it needs to get back into whack. Um, so again, our sample comes down from our injector. It's mixed with our hydrogen gas, and then it flows through here onto our capillary column, 30 meters. This is um, a 0.2 millimeter diameter. This is a carbowax column, so it is a, a slightly polar. Um, we actually use it for whiskey lab that we do. We analyze some of the components in whiskey. And then we come up here where we exit our column. And so as we flow out of the column, we enter our flame ionization detector, which is right here. So our flame ionization detector, we've got a little cone down inside there. The lighting's not great, so I'm not sure that you can actually see it. And there's an igniter coil. And so when we light our flame, our hydrogen flame in there, the sample flows out, it hits the flame, and it's, it uh, forms uh, CHO ions, basically. And so those ions are conductive 
we produce a current that's picked up as a signal. Um, and again, that output gives us peaks over time. As the sample elutes, the more carbons it has, the higher the current it produces. And so that's reflective not only of the concentration or the amount, but also the mass of the molecule. Those with larger numbers of carbon atoms will actually produce a higher signal. So it's a mass dependent detector. 